Anybody call out to Chelsea Pete and say, hey, little fighter, soon things will be brighter. When she as a kid ran up to the school that morning? No. Instead, the kids at school yelled at her that morning, hey, look, it's Two-Face from Batman, remembers Chelsea Pete from Alberta, Canada. But why? This brave woman was suffering from a rare neurological disorder called Sturge Weber syndrome from birth. She had a large port wine stain birthmark on the left side of her head. Well, it's not just a birthmark that affects her looks. It's a syndrome that cannot just be taken for granted and ignored. There are many complex conditions associated with it, depending on where it's located, either on the head or the body. The real problem that Chelsea's parents had to wrestle with was to learn to handle people staring and the inquisitive questions shot by people who were not aware of this particular syndrome. Her mother recalls people asking if she had been burned. She also remembers a gentleman walking up to her at the grocery store and asking if she needed help escaping an abusive relationship due to her baby's bad injury. Her mother would calmly explain to them her daughter's condition. Soon, everyone in their neighborhood was aware of Chelsea and her birthmark. The complications of this syndrome escalated as the seizures began for Chelsea when she was just about a year old. From a simple jerk to absent seizures and then to tonic-clonic seizures, where Chelsea would lurch backwards, banging her head and flailing on the floor. She would lose consciousness. Her muscles would stiffen and jerking movements would be seen. Every medication was tried, even the ones not easily accessible. Some were shipped from the States. Chelsea's health conditions began to decline alarmingly since the calcification of her brain speeded up with the innumerable daily occurrences of the seizures. The doctors felt helpless and they began to get her parents ready to bid a tearful farewell to their daughter as she lay on her bed with heat emitting out of her body and infections playing havoc on her health. Thankfully, Chelsea was flown to the Sick Children's Hospital in Toronto to undergo life-saving brain surgery at just 18 months. During the diagnostic tests and scans, they managed to locate the exact location of the brain. Chelsea was scheduled for a procedure which was done only once before in that hospital. The surgeons worked relentlessly for six long hours. They managed to remove the piece of brain that was not functioning properly. Chelsea's parents had told her later that they had literally walked past her bed in recovery as she could not be recognized with all the blood loss as she lay there on the bed with tubes and bandages. Chelsea had to learn all the basics again, from walking, talking, but the best part was within a couple days, she was already singing and clapping. Chelsea became seizure and medication free and she counted her blessings every day for that. Statistically speaking, Chelsea wasn't supposed to live through it, or even if she did, she wouldn't have the cognitive capabilities of her peers. School was just as expected. Her classmates were initially scared of her. She was scared as well to go to school, but luckily she had such caring teachers who saw to it that she was never left out. They never made her feel she wasn't part of their class. Eventually, she made friends and people felt comfortable with her. Incidentally, she learned at a young age to educate and advocate, to answer questions and to smile when faced with the spares and ogles. Then she remembers something of paramount importance that happened in her life, the release of a certain superhero movie. As Chelsea watched the villain step out into the light and show his acid burn face that looked exactly like hers, she was sure that her life would change forever. The very next day as she walked into school, the bullies sought her out, proud of themselves and began the chants and name calling. Chelsea was known as Two-Face. Chelsea at the time was receiving laser treatment for her birthmark. She had pencil eraser sized purple burn dots all over her birthmark. Chelsea was about four years old when she started the treatment for this and to say they were traumatizing is an understatement. They could handle only small patches at a time as she screamed in pain. With each snap, a dot was burned, 
the laser went deep into the skin to break up the blood vessels of the birthmark. The numbing creams did not help as all the extra blood flow made her left side very sensitive. She had to wear silly eye coverings and couldn't see anything as she waited for the first snap. The terminologist that did them in his private clinic would tell her mother she was causing a scene as one could hear her screaming all the way out into the waiting room. She was even held down by his assistants to the point she couldn't breathe as she screamed for them, stop. Thankfully, after that, Chelsea's mother said it would be Chelsea's decision to decide about the treatments as this wasn't worth the emotional toil it took on her. Chelsea would go back and do laser as she grew older since she just wanted to fit in. Some treatments at private clinics did offer anesthesia. Then she was flown to Boston to Shriners Hospital and had them till she was 21. During that period of time when she did them, she felt as she was going through the pain for the sake of others. This wasn't who she was or what she had wanted. It was then that she walked away from the world of lasers, covering up and wanting to look like everyone else. Chelsea wrestled with her emotions in her early 20s as she had to fight with a lot of depression, self-acceptance, and self-love. Everywhere she turned, anyone who was different was portrayed as a bad guy. They didn't deserve a role or even love as they were doomed as monsters. She had no friends and felt like a stranger with anyone her age. She couldn't connect with her peers as all they were interested in to talk about was their hair, their makeup, and dating. Incidentally, Chelsea found her husband through a mutual friend and as their relationship grew, she began to do more self-discovery than ever before. The real struggle she found in those early days was allowing herself to be called beautiful when she herself didn't believe it. Pushing down the boundaries of the regular beauty standards, Chelsea gradually got comfortable dealing with the questions, talking to people about her condition, and advocating for her rare syndrome. Now as a mother of two, Chelsea strives hard to prove to the world her point of view that people with facial differences aren't the scary monsters or villains that a lot of media and social situations have led them to believe. Chelsea gets excited when she sees someone who looks different, accepting that and rocking it for the world to accept and love. For two years, she has been an ambassador for a couple of organizations that are meant for individuals with birthmarks and facial differences. It has been Chelsea Pete's goal to be there for others when they are struggling along their journey, just as she had been. Through many of them have battle scars, either physical or emotional, they are the true warriors. Chelsea believes half the battle is won when one learns to see oneself and the uniqueness that one's differences brings to him or her. Chelsea advocates that all are incredible beings and they need the world to see that they don't have to look the same to conquer or to succeed. Hey guys, Chelsea Pete has been fighting since she was a child. She is not a survivor. She is a warrior. Won't you use the absolute privilege of meeting the amazing, strong, and inspiring woman called Chelsea Pete who has gone through all sorts? Won't you share her story, inspire someone, and change lives?